good demand or good supply. Most economists use aggregate demand aggregate supply model to analyze short-run fluctuations. And this chapter introduces these two models, the two pieces of this model, uh, to accomplish the task of analyzing short-run fluctuations in the economy. To accomplish this, uh, we will answer the following questions. What are the economic fluctuations? What are their characteristics? How does the model of aggregate demand and aggregate supply explain economic fluctuations? Why does aggregate demand curve slope downwards? What shifts the aggregate demand curve? What is the slope of the aggregate supply curve in the short run, in the long run? And what shifts the aggregate supply curve? By way of introduction, real GDP over the long run has grown about 3% per year on average. GDP in the short run fluctuates around its, around its trend. There are periods of recessions, which is uh, falling real incomes and rising unemployment. Depressions are very severe recessions and they're rare. Let's go over some facts about uh, economic fluctuations. Economic fluctuations are irregular and unpredictable. This first picture here shows uh, a growth trend of real gross domestic product over the period from about 1960 to about 2015 and you can see that the growth is on a straight upward trajectory and they are uh, the shaded areas are the recessions that uh, the economy has experienced over these periods of time Fact number two, most macroeconomic quantities fluctuate together. Um, you can see unemployment and growth in GDP and uh, investment spending, all these things vary together. Uh, fact number three, as output falls, unemployment rises. And here you see uh, uh, unemployment over the same period from 1960. As you can see, corresponding with every recession, this shaded area, uh, the recession of 1960, there was a sharp increase in unemployment. Then after that, the economy grows, unemployment comes down. And then there was another recession around 1970, 71, a sharp increase in unemployment. And then the economy grows, and then there was a big recession in 1973-74. Uh, I think there was Middle East war, and there was oil embargo in the United States. So that was quite a severe recession at that point. And then you see another growth, and then there was a recession in 1980, and then a big recession in 1982-83. Perhaps one of the worst recessions since the Great Depression. And then after that, the economy grew. So you can see the trend. Every recession, unemployment rises. And after, the, after that, the economy grows and unemployment comes down. And of course, you can see another big jump in unemployment during the 2008-2009 Great Recession. So as output falls, unemployment rises, fact number three. Classical economics, let's recap the topic we studied a few chapters ago. Classical economics, the classical dichotomy, which is the separation of variables into two groupings, real quantities, relative prices, nominal, measured in terms of money, the neutrality of money, changes in the money supply affect nominal but not real variables. 
The classical theory describes the world in the long run, but not in the short run. In the short run, changes in nominal variables like money supply or price can affect real variables like output or unemployment rate. We use a new model. And that new model is the aggregate demand and aggregate supply. So here is a, an aggregate demand, aggregate supply graph with a downsloping aggregate demand curve and uh, upsloping short-run aggregate supply. On the horizontal axis is real GDP represented by Y, and the vertical axis is the price level. And uh, the model determines the equilibrium price level and uh, equilibrium output. Aggregate demand curve. The aggregate demand curve shows the quantity of all goods and services demanded in the economy at any given price. At, at uh, P1, you can see there is a corresponding output, Y1. At P2, there is a corresponding output, Y2, represented on the aggregate demand. Why the aggregate demand curve slopes downwards? is a reason. The identity y is equal to c plus i plus g plus nx. We assume that g is fixed by government, it is determined outside the model. To understand the slope of the aggregate demand, we must determine how a change in price affects consumption, investment, and net export. The wealth effect price and consumption. Suppose the price level P declines, there is increase in real value of money. When price goes down, people feel wealthier. The money can buy more. Consumers are wealthier. There is increase in consumer spending and there is increase in quantity demanded of goods and services. What about the interest rate effect? That is price and investment spending. Suppose the price level P declines, uh, buying goods and services require fewer dollars. So demand for money declines. People buy bonds and other assets. A decrease in the interest rate follows. When there is a decrease in the interest rate, there is an increase in spending on investment goods, increase in quantity demanded of goods and services. Exchange rate effect, that is price and net exports. Suppose the US price level P declines, there is a decrease in interest rate. US dollar depreciates. We saw earlier on that when interest rate declines domestically, uh, the dollar depreciates. Uh, this stimulates U.S. net exports. America can sell more, export increases, and increase in quantity demanded of goods and services. So a slope of the aggregate demand curve summary an increase in price reduces quantity of goods and services demanded because um, there's the wealth effect, that is consumption falls, there is the interest rate effect, that is investment spending falls, there is the exchange rate effect, net export falls. Why aggregate demand curve might shift? Okay, any event that changes consumption, investment, government spending, or net export, except a change in price, will shift aggregate demand. For example, a stock market boom makes households feel wealthier, and that will change consumption. And if it changes consumption, aggregate demand shifts to the right. Changes in consumption would involve things like stock market boom, 
preferences, consumption savings, trade-off, tax hikes, those are variables that might change consumer spending, and that will shift aggregate demand curve. Changes in investment spending. Farms buy new computers, equipment, factories. Uh, expectations, optimism, and pessimism. Uh, expectations affect investment spending. Interest rate, monetary policy, investment tax credit, or other tax ingredients. These are variables that changes in them will change investment. And if it changes investment, it leads to a shift in aggregate demand curve. Changes in government, that's federal government spending, e.g. defense spending, state and local government spending, e.g. in roads and schools. Any change in government spending will shift aggregate demand. If government spending increases, aggregate demand will shift to the right. If government spending decreases, aggregate demand will shift to the left. Changes in net exports, booms and recessions in countries that buy our exports. Um, if there is a boom in our trading partner, net export increases as American is, America is able to sell more or our exports will increase. If there is recessions over there and their incomes are falling, the aggregate demand will shift to the left. Appreciation or depreciation of the dollar resulting from international speculation in foreign exchange market that leads to changes in net exports. The first active learning, what happens to aggregate demand curve in each of the following scenario? Number A, a 10 year old investment tax credit expires. Number B, US exchange rate falls. Number C, a fall in prices increases the real value of consumers' wealth. Number D, state governments replace their sales tax with new taxes on interest, dividend, and capital gains. Answer to number A, a 10-year-old investment tax credit expires. That means investment will fall. Aggregate demand shifts to the left. There is no longer the incentive to buy investments. Number B, US exchange rate falls. If you exchange rate falls, the dollar is cheaper, our exports will rise. And when export rise, net export goes up. And when net export goes up, aggregate demand shifts to the right. Number C, a fall in prices increases the real value of consumer's wealth. Um, a fall in price is not uh, changing one of the components of aggregate demand. It is changing price, which is measured on the vertical axis, and that is a movement along a given aggregate demand curve. It does not shift the curve. Number D, state governments replace their sales taxes with new taxes on interest, dividends, and uh, tax and capital gains. That will increase consumption spending, and uh, that will mean a right shift of aggregate demand. Let's look at aggregate supply curve. Aggregate supply curve shows the total quantity of goods and services farms produce and sell at any given price level. As AS is upward sloping in the short run, aggregate supply is upward sloping in the short run. It is vertical in the long run. We're going to explain why. Long run aggregate supply curve, LRAS. The natural rate of output, that is YN, is the amount of output the economy produces when unemployment is as at its natural rate is also called potential output or full employment output. Full employment output or YN determined by the economy's stock of labor, capital, and natural resources and on the level of technology. An increase in price does not affect 
any of these so it does not affect uh, uh, output. That is the classical dichotomy. Long run aggregate supply curve might shift. Any event that changes any of the determinants of uh, a natural output will shift long run aggregate supply. For example, immigration that increases labor that will cause YN to rise and that will shift the long run aggregate supply curve. Changes in L or natural rate of unemployment. Immigration, baby boomers retire, that will change the natural rate. Government policies reduce natural rate of unemployment. Changes in capital or human capital, that is investment in factories and equipment, that's capital. More people get college degrees, that's human capital. Factories destroyed by hurricane, that is destruction of capital. Those will shift long run aggregate supply. Changes in natural resources, discovery of new mineral deposits, reduction in supply of imported oil, changes in weather patterns that affect agricultural products. These changes will affect long run aggregate supply. Changes in technology, productivity improved, imp pro productivity improvements from technological progress that will shift long run aggregate supply. Using ADAS to depict long run growth and inflation. Over the long run, technological progress shifts long run aggregate supply to the right. Like from 1990, there's a shift to 10-year shift to 2000 to 2010. Over that period of time, there's a technological progress, there is immigration, there is uh, increase in capital that shifts the long run aggregate supply to the right. And growth in the money supply uh, shifts aggregate demand. And that shifts it to the right, as you can see, the aggregate demand in 1990, then 2010 years later, prices have gone up. 2010, prices have gone up. There's some in inflation built in here. Okay. The result is ongoing inflation and growth in output. Short run aggregate supply. The short run aggregate supply. Uh, is upward sloping over the period of one to two years that is a, the definition of short run an increase in price let's say p move from p1 to p2 causes an increase in quantity of goods and services supply that's moving from y1 to y2 why the slope of uh, short run aggregate supply matters. As aggregate supply is vertical, fluctuations in aggregate demand do not cause fluctuations in output or, or employment. Shifts from AD1 to AD2 does not change Y. Y1 still remains Y1. Or if it shifts from AD1 to AD0, it still remains at that point. As uh, aggregate supply slopes up, then shifts in aggregate demand do affect output and employment. Three theories of short run aggregate supply. Three theories explaining why short run aggregate supply is upward sloping. Theories that explain why the AS curve slopes upward in the short run are sticky wage theory, sticky price theory, misperceptions theory. In each, some type of market imperfection. Output deviates from its natural rate when the actual price level deviates from the price level people expected. So, 
nominal wage, that is the first explanation, the sticky wage theory, the imperfection here is nominal wages are sticky in the short run. They adjust sluggishly due to labor contracts, social norms. Firms and workers set the nominal wage in advance based on price expectations, the price level they expect to prevail. If the actual price is higher than expected price, PE is expected price, revenue is higher, but labor cost is not. Production is more profitable, so firms will increase output and employment. Hence, higher P causes higher output, so the short-run aggregate supply curve slopes upward. Number two, the sticky price theory. The imperfection here is many prices are sticky in the short run due to many costs, the cost of adjusting prices. Examples, cost of printing new menus, the time required to change price tags. Firms set sticky prices in advance based on price expectations. Suppose the Fed increases the money supply unexpectedly. In the long run, price will rise. However, in the short run, firms without many costs can raise their prices immediately. Firms with many costs wait to raise prices with relatively low prices, increases, incre in increases demand for their products, increase output and employment. Hence, a higher price is associated with higher output, so the short-run aggregate supply curve slopes upward. Number three, the misperceptions theory. The imperfection here is, Farms may confuse changes in price with changes in the relative price of the products they sell. If price rises above expected price, farm sees its price rise before realizing all prices are rising. The farm may believe its relative price is rising and may increase output and employment. So, an increase in price can cause an increase in output, making the short-run aggregate supply curve upward sloping. What the three theories have, have in common? In all three theories, Y deviates from YN when price deviates from PE. <coughs> So the equation Y equals YN or output equals natural rate output plus A into bracket actual price minus expected price. So Y is output, YN natural rate of output, that's a long run output, P is actual price and PE is expected price. Uh, A which is positive, measures how much Y responds to unexpected changes in price. Okay, now let's look at this uh, uh, equation demonstrated graphically. So you can see the long run aggregate supply, this dotted line here, right at natural rate output. The PE here is expected price level. If P, e is ab if P is above P, e, if actual price is above expected price, then output will be above natural rate output. The upper portion of the short-run aggregate supply is operational. On the other hand, if P is less than P, e, if actual price is less than price that people expect, then output will be less than the natural rate output. So short-run aggregate supply and long-run aggregate supply. The imperfections in these theories are temporary. Over time, sticky wages and prices become flexible. Misperceptions are corrected so that in the long run, 
price, expected price will be C0 will be equal to actual price. Aggregate supply curve becomes vertical. So in the long run, PE is equal to P and Y is equal to YN as shown in this graph here. Why short-run aggregate supply might shift? Everything that shifts long-run aggregate supply will shift short-run aggregate supply too. As PE shifts, short-run aggregate supply um, also PE shifts short-run aggregate supply. If P rises, PE rises, workers and farms set higher wages at each price level produce production is less uh, production is less profitable output falls and short run aggregate supply shifts to the left long run equilibrium in the long run um, equilibrium pe is equal to p y is equal to y n and unemployment is at its natural rate so this is an economy in the long run equilibrium economic fluctuations four steps to analyzing economic fluctuations one determine whether the event shifts aggregate demand or aggregate supply two determine whether curve shifts left or right three use a das diagram to see how the shift changes y and p in the short run and four use a das diagram to see how economy moves from new short run equilibrium to new long run equilibrium effects of a shift in aggregate demand Let's say an example of an event would be stock market crash. If there is a stock market crash, number one, it affects consumption. Aggregate demand curve will shift to the left. Yeah, when the stock market crashes, people feel poorer, consumption will fall, and anything that affects consumption, which is a component of aggregate demand, will shift aggregate demand to the left. Short-run equilibrium moves from A to B. P and Y are lower and unemployment is higher. We have moved from YN to Y2. Then unemployment has increased as the economy goes into recession. Over time, price expectations fall. People begin to expect price to go down. And uh, as price expectations fall, short-run aggregate supply shifts to the right until long-run equilibrium at C okay, shift from this point to this point. Equilibrium moves from B to C as short-run aggregate supply shifts to the right and unemployment moves right back to natural rate output. Okay. Two big aggregate demand shifts, the Great Depression. As you see in this diagram, beginning with 1929, from 1929 to 1933, money supply fell by 28% due to problems in the banking system. Stock prices fell 90%, reducing consumption and investment. Output fell by 27%. Price fell by 22%. Unemployment rate rose from 3% to 25%. So if this is real GDP 1929, it went down from a little over 850 all the way down to under 650 until the bottom of uh, the recession 1933 before it turned around a little bit. The second big move in, in uh, real GDP was 1939, the World War II boom. 
From 1939 to 1944, government outlays rose from 9.1 billion to 91.3 billion. When the United States got into the war, uh, government spending increased uh, considerably. As you can see, output rose 90% from 1939 over 1,000, under a little under 1,000, and until 1944, it was over 1,800. And um, price rose by 20%, and employment fell from 17% to 1%. That was a dramatic change because of that. Active learning too. Working with the model, draw aggregate demand, short-run aggregate supply, long-run aggregate supply diagram for the U.S. economy starting in a long-run equilibrium. A boom occurs in Canada. Use your diagram to determine the short-run and long-run effects on U.S. GDP, the price level, and unemployment. There is the diagram starting from equilibrium A, the boom in Canada uh, shifts net exports. As America will sell more, U.S. exports will increase, and that will shift aggregate demand curve from AD1 to AD2. Okay, short run equilibrium at moves from A to B, price will increase from P1 to P2, and unemployment moves lower. Unemployment is lowered. Okay, over time, people will expect prices to go up. When price expectations move up, it will shift short run aggregate supply. In other words, equilibrium will shift from point B to point C as short-run aggregate supply shifts from 1 to 2. Um, output and unemployment will move right back to natural rate output. Case study, Great Recession 2008 to 2009. There was large contractionary shift in aggregate demand. Real GDP fell sharply by 4.2% between the fourth quarter of 2007 and the second quarter of 2009. Employment fell sharply. Unemployment rose from 4.4% in May of 2007 to 10% in October 2009. The housing market played a central role in this recession. The graph shows uh, the movement, the case Shiller Home Index price. The problem was in the real estate, so home prices were considerably affected. As you can see, the home prices from 2000 uh, started at around 100, that is the Shiller Index, and at the peak 2006, to 2007 was over 200 and then when the recession hit home prices fall very sharply rising home prices during the 2002-2006 due to low interest rates there was easier credit for subprime borrowers government policies were to increase home ownership uh, securitization of the mortgage these are the events that led to the price of houses or uh, the prices in real estate to rise considerably. Securitization of mortgages. Investment banks purchased mortgages from lenders, created securities, uh, securities backed by these mortgages. And these securities were sold. They sold the securities to banks, insurance companies, and other investments. Mortgage-backed securities perceived as safe since house prices were never fall, which was a misperception. Okay, so people had faith and they bought a lot of this uh, stuff. The consequences of 2006-2009 housing market crash. Millions of homeowners underwater, went underwater. In other words, they owed more than house was worth 
They took these mortgages and when the prices fall, they found out that uh, the value of the houses was way lower than what they owed. Millions of mortgage defaults and foreclosures. Banks selling foreclosed houses increased surplus and downward price pressures. Housing crash badly damaged construction industry. 2010 unemployment rate was 20.6% in construction versus 9.6 overall. So construction industry was hit very hard by this recession. Mortgage-backed securities became toxic, heavy losses for institutions that purchased them. There was widespread failures of banks and other financial institutions, sharply rising unemployment and falling GDP. The policy response, how did the government respond to these events? The Federal Reserve reduced federal funds rate target to near zero to in an attempt to stimulate the economy. Federal Reserve purchased mortgage, mortgage-backed securities and other private loans. United States Treasury injected capital into the banking system to increase banks' liquidity and solvency in hopes of staving off a credit crunch. Fiscal policymakers increased government spending and reduced taxes by $800 billion. Effects of a shift in short-run aggregate supply. Here the event is oil prices. And increases in costs shift um, short-run aggregate supply. Assume long-run aggregate supply is constant. Okay. Increase in cost shifts short-run aggregate supply to the left. And um, short-run equilibrium moves from point number A to point number B. Price is higher and uh, Y is lower. In other words, the economy goes into recession as unemployment inches higher. From A to B, we call it stagflation, a period of falling output and rising prices. Prices going up and output is falling. That was the case of stagflation. Accommodation, accommodating an adverse shift in uh, short-run aggregate supply. If policymakers do nothing, low employment causes wages to fall, short-run aggregate supply shifts right until long-run equilibrium is established at A. So in other words, if short-run shifts to the left, creating a recession, and the government does absolutely nothing, then wages will fall and other costs will fall, and that will trigger a shift of the short-run aggregate supply curve to the right, and the economy will move back to A by itself. Or policymakers could use fiscal or monetary policy to increase aggregate demand, in other words, accommodating the aggregate supply shift. If policymakers are impatient, they want to do something about this recession, uh, then they respond by shifting the aggregate supply. Then output Y will move back to the natural rate, but price will move from P2 to P3 permanently. In other words, we are seeing an inflation created by accommodating policy. 1970s oil, sh oil shocks and their effects. 1973 to 75, real oil prices went up by 138%. CPI went up by 21%. Real GDP declined by 7 tenths of a percent. Number of unemployed was about 3.5 million people. What about 1978-1980? Oil prices went up by 
CPI moved up 26%, real GDP went up by 2.9%, and unemployment uh, went up by 1.4 million people. John Minard Keynes, 1883 to 1946, the general theory of employment, interest, and money. That was the title of the book written by John Minard Keynes. His argument was that recessions and depressions can result from inadequate demand, that policymakers should shift aggregate demand. The famous critique of classical theory by John Maynard Keynes. The long run is a misleading guide to current affairs. In the long run, we are all dead. Economists set themselves too easy, too useless a task if in tempestuous seasons, they can only tell us when the storm is long past, the ocean will be flat. That was the challenge that uh, J.M. Keynes threw to the classical school. Conclusion, this chapter has introduced the model of aggregate demand and, and aggregate supply, and it helps explain economic fluctuations. Keep in mind, these fluctuations are deviations from the long run trends explained by the model as we learned in previous chapters. In the next chapter, we'll see how policymakers can affect aggregate demand with fiscal and monetary policy. Summary, short-run economic fluctuations uh, around the long-run trend are irregular and largely unpredictable. When recessions occur, real GDP and other measures of income, spending, and production fall while unemployment rises. Classical economic theory assumption, nominal variables such as money, money supply and the price level do not influence real variables such as output and employment. Accurate in the long run, but not in the short run. The model of aggregate demand and aggregate supply is that the output of goods and services and the overall level of prices adjusts to balance aggregate demand and aggregate supply. The aggregate demand, uh, the aggregate demand curve slopes downwards for these three reasons, the wealth effect, the interest rate effect, and the exchange rate effect. These are the effects that explain the downslope of the aggregate demand curve. Any event or policy that raises consumption, investment, government purchases, or net exports at a given price level increases aggregate demand. Any event or policy that reduces consumption, investment, government purchases, or net export at a given price level decreases aggregate demand. In the long run, aggregate supply curve is vertical. The quantity of goods and services supplied depends on the economy's labor, capital, natural resources, and technology, but not on the overall level of prices. Three theories explain the upward slope of the short-run aggregate supply. And these are sticky wage theory, sticky price theory, misperceptions theory. All three theories imply that output deviates from its natural rate when the actual price level deviates from the price level that people expected. Shifts of short-run aggregate supply curve. Events that alter the economy's ability to produce output. Causes of economic fluctuations. Shifts in aggregate demand and aggregate supply. And that is the end of chapter 33 lecture.